She would never see victory. Mm. 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 So when I sing victory belongs to Jesus, mm. yeah. I really mean that. Sometimes yeah. it's just a minor victory that mm. cause things to happen in your life. Mm. If you have your Bibles, I want you to stay with me while you're singing it. I had a moment just a few minutes ago. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Sometimes the pain in your life can be so rough. Yes. Come on. Yes. Oh, wow. I'm going to read the scripture and I'll explain it to you in just a second. And I think that song was appropriate. In the book of John, chapter number 15, I decided I was going to oh, do some things. And I just want to. John, chapter number 15, he says. I am the true vine, yes. and my father is the vine dresser. Yes. He says, every branch in me that bears, that does not bear fruit, he takes away. <laughs> and every branch that bears fruit, <laughs> he prunes it. That <laughs> it may bear more fruit. <laughs> you already clean. Yes because of the word which I have spoken to you. But if you abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. 
He who abides in me, yes. and I in him, yes. bear much fruit. Yes. Yes. For without me, you can do nothing. And if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire. Wow. And they are burned. Wow. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire. And it shall be done for you. Father, I bless you, God. God, I thank you, God. I worship you, God. I praise you, oh God. God, we lift you up, oh God, on high, oh God. God, we say have your way in this service, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Do it, oh God, so that they'll know that there's none like you, God. God, we decrease, God, that you may increase, oh God. God, make me the first hearer of your word, oh God. Speak, Lord, before, because we're listening. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can be seated. I thought a lot about what I was going to say on today. Scripture says, I am the vine, and you are the vine dresser. Yeah. The Father is the vine dresser. I thought about a lot about what I was going to say on today. And God began to, to deal with me as such. And, and I began to, to think about all the things that had happened over the course of our lives and over the course of our, 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 our thinking and the course of the things that we do. But I want you to understand that our God is absolutely, mm -hmm. totally, irreversibly, mm. unpredictably awesome. Mm. He's higher than you can think. Yeah. He can be lower than you can ever imagine. Uh -huh. David said it this way. He said, where can I go that I can not be in your presence? Uh -huh. And I wanted to let you know that because one of the, the things and the characteristics about God is that God is all-knowing. He's omnipresent and he's omnipotent. Yeah. In other words, you can go as far as you can go and when you get there, you'll find God. Uh -huh. <laughs> and God will still be where you left from. And while you're on your way, God will still be there too. And when you get there, God will say when he's there that I knew you were going to go from where you were going to go. And I was with you while you were running. And I was already where you were going when you got here. And since I was with you where you were going, and I was with you where you were, and I was with you where you are, then I knew everything that was going to happen in the process. But the thing is, I have the power to do whatever I need to do in between. It's God. The Bible says he's our source and he's our sustainer. He's our infinite king. And God has wisdom. But right here, they call him many names. They call him the king of kings, the lord of lords. They call him the wheel in the middle of a wheel. They call him the well in the middle of the desert. They call him the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley. They call him Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Makedesh, Jehovah Tesitkanu, Jehovah uh, Nisi, Jehovah Bel Perazim, which means my banner. Of, oh, no, that means uh, the Lord of the Breakthrough. They called him uh, Je Jehovah Jireh, my provider. And in fact, they called him so many names they, 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 that the authors, they stutter when they try to mention him. But do you not know that in the beginning, God's name was so holy that it was illegal to even mention him. His name had so much power that they couldn't even say his name, so they began to attach symbols to it. And then all of a sudden, one day, they just said, instead of us just saying his name, let's just call him by his acts. So they call him a healer. They call him peace. They call him the prince of peace. They call him Jehovah overall. They call him the Lord present. They call him Jehovah Shammah. They call him Jesus. But at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, things in heaven and things in earth, that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so, I don't know whether your knees are bowing now or they'll bow later, but one day, every knee shall bow. Somebody asked me to say, they said, what if we found aliens somewhere? I said, what? Well, if they got a knee, they got to bow. I need you to understand this. Because if you don't understand this, you won't fully understand what he's doing with you. 
If you don't understand that, you won't fully understand what he's attempting to do in you. Well, I'm sorry, that is God doesn't attempt to do anything. All he does is do it. Come on, man. Because he's God. And he says, I sit alone on the circle of the earth and I don't need any counsel other than my own. He says, I'm God and I'm God if I have to do it by myself. So my question is, who are you going to trust? Mm -hmm. Government even shut down on you without notice. Mm -hmm. We elect people sometimes without even thinking who we elect them. But you know what? That's right. We can't vote him out mm -hmm. and we can't vote him in. Because mm -hmm. he's a king. Right. I'm sorry. He's the king of kings. Yeah. I was texting Minister Joseph one day, and, 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 I, and I gave God a compliment, and then I stopped, and I said, I felt guilty. Mm -hmm. I said, because I didn't compliment him enough. Mm -hmm. You see, if you say he's good, yes. he's already better than that. Yes. You say he's awesome, he's already better than that. Yes. Incredible can't describe just how yeah. awesome he is. Yeah. Right. One writer says he's indescribable, mm -hmm. unexplainable. Mm -hmm. You spoke the stars and you know them by name. Because yes. you are an amazing God. Yes. And I did all of that and I still haven't even came close to describing who he was. Because yes. yes. I forgot to mention to you that he's a mind regulator. Yes. Yes. I forgot to mention to you that he was a problem fixer. Yes. I forgot to mention to you that he's a lawyer in the courtroom. Yes. Yes. And I'm still thinking of things even as we speak. And so I'll be get on with this message before. That's all right. Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. But our God, yes. the one who's never lost a battle, yes. the one who's never lost a case, yes. the Bible says that before there was a where or a when, no. he says he knew Glory you. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord He God. says he knew you. Yes. And so Jesus, while he was speaking, he gave an interesting testimony. He made a profound statement. He says, I am the vine. And you are the vine. Uh, 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 and my father, the vine dresser. He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And I began to think about that one concept and that one thing. And I began to realize what it is that God was really, really saying. So what do you do when God becomes your vine dresser? Interesting composition. You see, because when God becomes your vine dresser, one of the things that happens is God says, I alone. He says, I set the table before you. I set the circle of the earth before you. And he says, and I laid everything out before there was a where or a when. I laid everything out for you so that you can be here. And I knew that you were going to be here. And one of the things that God said he was doing, he says, he says, he says, I have complete control over you. And see, and I need you to understand that because if you don't understand that, God says before there was a where or a when, he says you were my seed. He says you were my seed. In other words, you originated in me. In him we live and we move and without ever moving we have our being. God says you're mine. And he says no matter what you did, you're mine. And I need you to understand that because if you don't understand that, you'll think of yourself as instrumentally small. But God says... I knew you. And he says, and I placed you in the palm of my hands. I, I need you to see that. I need you to understand that. And I need you to grasp that. And don't be scared because I think a little strange at times. But when I see what God is saying, I have to carry it out. He says, I knew you. And see, and the thing that we don't understand is that sometimes in God's infinite wisdom, God will prepare things for us. God will prepare things for us. And sometimes what God prepares for us, it looks like problems. And sometimes our problems, they look like dirt. And I need you to understand this thing because what God will do sometimes in you is God will put you because he has you in his hands. And other people may think you're small. But one of the things that happen is God has need of you and he has you for you. And you may be small now. But when God, in the hand of God, God knows how to do much. And so sometimes God will place you in a predicament. It's a little bit uncomfortable. It's a little bit uncomfortable to you. But see, all the while, God has needed you. And see, and what happens is a lot of times, and this is the part where we get scared at, because sometimes when God covers us, and God's covering us, sometimes God uses a mess to cover us. And he covers us in a mess. And what he's really doing is he's hiding us. 
But see, what you don't understand that when he hides you and when he covers you, you see, the, 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 the very thing, some people threw dirt on you. And they thought they were throwing dirt over you to kill you. But what they were really doing is they were putting you in a predicament where you can grow and receive from God. And see, and, and, and if that was enough, that process can be painful. It can, oh, it can be painful. Do, do you hear me when I say it can be painful? But God knew exactly what he was doing. And, and, and I can imagine sometimes when we're in this place, oh, it's hard. It's uncompromising. And then if that weren't enough and we think that we're comfortable, God comes along and what God does is God does this. What do you do during your rain season? During the season when it seems like rain is coming down on you. Have you ever noticed sometimes that it seems like the rain is coming down on you and the sun is on everybody else? But what God says is, God said, I make this process for your growth. And in this process, everything feels like it's breaking you down. But God says, but I know the plans that I have for you. They thought they were throwing dirt on you. They thought they were pouring water. They thought they were covering you up. But God said, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. To give you a hope and a future and an expected end. He says, I know it. He said, I know the plans. I know what I have for you. And you see, this process right here, it can be a bit alarming. It can bother you. Brother Paul, can you get that stuff from in the back for me? If you don't mind, sir. He says, it can be painful. It can hurt a little bit. God says, but I know what I had for you from the beginning. Yes. What I had for you from the beginning. Yes. And see, and the thing I need you to understand is that because he's the vine dresser, mm -hmm. even the heat that he brings on you. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all think y'all in a hot time, but some of the heat that he brought on you was nothing more than to grow you. Yes. And see, and when a seed is falls to the ground, unless it dies, unless it becomes, then what winds up happening is it'll never be what God intended for it to be. That's right. And so one of the things that God did was God, see, God saw you as this. Do you not know that the same thing that's in this is in this? Do you not know that the same way that you were meant to grow and become? Same here. Same here. Some of you, God what God did in you was God, what he did was God came to you and he gave you this. You can keep it like that. That's you. <laughs> That's my aunt Kat. She's my, my oldest living aunt. And, and, and one of the things that happened was you thought that he was giving you junk. Be careful of the small things that God gives you. Because while you're not looking, they're growing. You, some of y'all ain't got to be careful of the people that you overlook. Because some of the same people that you overlook, while you're overlooking them, while they're in their night season, while they're in their day season, they're growing, while they're covered up. That's why I don't overlook anybody. I don't undermine anybody. I don't care what they're doing when I meet them. I don't care where they are when I meet them. When I meet them, I look and I see what God said that I should see them. I, I'm so serious. I saw a young kid the other day, and he was in there. He was in the game. He was selling. He was selling selling drugs, and he was fighting. And I said, "I like your strength. You're just using it wrong." Do you not know that the same the same fervor that you're using to sell drugs, you can use it to sell T-shirts, shoes, candy. Yes, yes. The same thing. You just pick the product that's gonna kill you one day. I like your strength. You're just using it wrong. Let me show you how to use this. To, in a way that you can make more money and not have to go to jail to do it. See, that, brothers and sisters, is the difference between religion and relationship. See, religion will say, okay, well, you're doing all that, you don't need to be that. But, but relationship will say, I see, but this is the plan that God has for you. 
See, religion would diagnose. If you notice, Mr. Pringle, when he was talking, he was talking relationship. He diagnosed the blurry condition. But he told you who can fix it. That's the difference. If I just come up on you and say, you're blind, it don't mean nothing. You know you're blind already. You don't have to tell people they ain't sin. They already know they ain't sin. Now, sometimes you may have to say something, but I'm just saying. But people know when they ain't sin. They knew before you even, they just trying to figure out a way to get away with it. Sometimes you know you're going to be able to get away with that, but God, God's grace. I'm going to pronounce grace over you. I'm going to pray for you. But you're going to have to get that right. Listen to me. He says, I'm the vine and you are the branches. He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. You see, even, see, sometimes God will use even the bad things in your life to give you nutrients from it. But if that were enough, I would praise God. My problem is not the first part. Because I've been through the first part and I thought I was okay. But he says, if you bear fruit, then you... But he says, but if you don't bear fruit, there's a whole nother process to this thing. What do you do when bad begins to work for God? I had a thought. An interesting thing that the gardener, in his infinite wisdom, one of the, some of the tools that he uses are tools like this. Now, I don't know if, but to me, if I was a seed, this looked like it would hurt me. As he begins to dig and he begins to, to place you in places that you weren't expecting. And then sometimes he'll, have you ever been raked over? <laughs> just the way I think, I apologize. But you ever been raked over and then combed over and you just felt like you just messed over? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all sitting in this room. Like, yeah, I done been messed over a couple times. I done been wet. <laughs> But God has a plan for your life. Amen. And, I, and if you don't understand that, when God pulls out the next set of tools, That's right. you might not understand. Because after the digging, you know, we have this treasure that's in earth and vessel, that the excellency may be of him and not of us. And, and, and sometimes God will dig in you because he knows through all the mess, there's something that he came to get. Amen. So sometimes it got to dig in you. But after you've grown a little while, See, here's the problem I have with the pruning process, with, the, with that process, is because sometimes we think that we've grown, but what we've really been doing is growing wild. Mm -hmm. ah. I'm going to let that marinate for a little bit. Ah. Let that marinate for a little bit. Yo, he got me too. He got me too. He got me too. Wow. Sometimes when we think we've grown, oh, wow. what we've really done is grown wild. Yes. And sometimes God has to reel us back in, and Come he has to now. check us. Yes. And he has to wheel us back in, and he has to get us straight. Because in between the bearing the fruit and the growing is a whole other process. And most people get lost in this process. During this process, most people walk away from God. During this process, most people run away from God. During this process, most people run away from themselves. And one of the things that happens is sometimes God will look at this thing and God says, hmm. Now, first of all, he ain't looking up at it. God always, you know, God. But he said, hmm, that is almost where I want it to be. It's almost what I want it to be. Pass this picture around for me, honey. Because I didn't put it up there. I should have put it up there. Uh, if you want to, you can pass it to Minister Pranger. He can put the, the, the big picture up there. I know he'll find it. He pray on him. He give me stuff. <laughs> okay, so listen, him and him brother Mike, my dad. Um, and so sometimes God will look at you and he'll say, I'm "Not quite where I wanted to be." Now hear me and hear me good on this. So what God will do? God will pull out the next set of tools. And he says, "I am the vine, and you are the branches." He says, see, I'm the vine, and you're the branches. Apart 
For me, you can do nothing. But, right. he said, but, but, but in me, you can do all things. Ask what you will and yes. it should be done. And so sometimes God will look at you and God will say, oh, she's growing a little bit too wild here. Okay. She's growing a little bit too wild. And so what I got to do is I got to cut her. Now I'm sure that didn't hurt you as much as it hurt the tree. Because if the tree can talk, it can probably And the interesting thing is, I'm cutting this tree in front of you. Have you ever been cut with a visible wound in front of people? Have you ever been? Have you ever been wounded and your wound was public? Have you ever been, have God ever got you in a place where you thought you were so such and much, and then all of a sudden, be careful that when God is working in you, see, this happened to me a little while ago, and God began to, see, and, and I need you to understand something, because one of the things that happened is when God begins to, <laughs> To, to, to do this thing, one of the things that happens is God begins to, 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 to snip off stuff in your life that's not like him. Ah, come on. Stuff that'll cause you not to grow. Stuff that'll cause you... On, see, because as long as this is here, this is what they call... Check this out. Check this out. I did some research. You know, this is what they call a terminal bud. What that says is nothing will grow from that point on. It's terminal. But if I, but it'll never become that unless I do this. See, because from that grows more leaves and more trees and more things and more stuff. See, God did his own son like that. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made in him was the light. And that light was the light of men. That light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Now there was a man who, and anyway, he went on to say this. He said, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace, full of truth, full of mercy, full of every good and perfect thing. And God looked at him and he says, I gotta cut you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, gee, and if I and if I to do more, it, it, no, actually, y'all hard here. So what that really looked like? Is, <laughs> Jesus Christ, Savior for the sins of the world. What that really looked like? Oh my God! Because cursed is any man who hung on the tree. So what happened was when he took your sins. And he threw him away. From out of Christ sprung the church. God wanted more sons and daughters, so he had to cut his own so that he could get more. Because had God not crucified Jesus, you and I would have never been here. Hear me when I say that. The seed of Abraham. And, and here's the thing. Can, can I be honest with you about something? Because I, I got to make it personal. I was cut a while back. Severe cuts. And you know all the cuts we sustained in 2013. And, you know, it started out with Brother Darrell and then, uh, you know, Miss Yvonne's husband, Big Pop. Started off with him. Still don't know what color his eyes were, but it started with him. I've been trying to figure it out. I, I ask people, they don't even know what color. But, and then it went on and on and on and on. And then Brian, and I think Brian was before that. And even, you know, different people. And, and then finally it was, it, 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 was, it, was, it was Darius, and then mm -hmm. and my heart began to break, and, and even more, and then mm -hmm. it was, before that, it was, it was a month earlier, it was Aunt Pearl, and, and, and you know, and, and what God was doing was, see, God was doing this, you see, because God knew that sometimes, in order for you to continue to grow, he has to cut people and cut things out of your life, and that could be painful. When he cuts things and people out of your life, sometimes it seems like it's the problem of their life. And sometimes you say, well, they had, it seemed like they had so much more in them. Mm -hmm. And what God was saying is that they lived to the fullest of what I desired for them to do. And, and what God was saying was, I, I wanted them in heaven as a beautiful gift. Mm -hmm. And so what God wanted to do was, but one of the things that God was saying was, if I had not removed them from your life, 
Would you have grown any further? Mm. Ah, mm. Come on. Mm. Wow. Would you have would, would you have grown any further? Mm. Had I, I I understand that it hurt, and, and, and I understand that there's pain. And I understand that you miss them, but I miss them too. And I love them more than you have. This is what God told me. God says, I love them more than you ever could. And one day I was, the one time that I almost asked a question, God, I said, God, when Darius died, I said, God, when my son died, where were you when he died? And he simply replied to you, I mean, the same place I was when my son died. <laughs> That would dry your tears up pretty quick, wouldn't it? I was sitting on the throne, and I was concerned about you even then. But do you know that even today, God ministered to me through that, because his, can I, I'll be honest with you, I, I'm always honest. I like to be honest. I don't like to preach to you without being honest. I was sitting here in worship. I was sitting in, I was walking around the church. I was scared to death. Let me tell you why. See, I have children that I, you know, did all this stuff with Ray and everything like that. But I only have one biological son still remaining. And this morning, we were sitting at the table, Mom, and, and he asked me to go somewhere. I didn't want him to go. I'm going to be honest with you. It's Mother's Day, and fear just began to grip me. And he said, Dad, can I drive to Richmond? Richmond is a little over an hour away. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I sat there, and I struggled with that thing. I'm going to be honest with you. I struggled with that thing because he was driving. And he was going on a road trip, probably the longest one he's been on. Derek died going on a road trip. I said, God, I, I don't know what to do. And he says, trust me. And I said, God, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. He said, I just told you, trust me. He said, why are you at it? Sit in Jaquan with him. <laughs> and then my son said, I want to go. And I said, Gee, oh y'all killing me. <laughs> and he said, Send my son too. Oh my God. And then my wife said, Well, tell them they better learn the names of God while they're in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Well, I'm But that hurt. Us. Can I be honest with you? And Minister Pringle asked me, he said, what song do you want? I said, what, you got a song? He said, no, what song do you want to play? And instantly a song popped in my head. And when the song first started, mm. who can stand against the Lord? Mm. No one can. No one will. Oh. My wife didn't know she's there. And I'm like, what? She said, and I'm still saying, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. She says, Micah made it. Oh. Oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Thank you, God. Jaquan, Jaquan, baby. They're in the same car. And before you ask, my child made it too. That was it. Okay. What? Oh my God. Mm. But the pruning process hurts. Mm. Mm. But victory belongs to Jesus. Mm. Victory belongs to Him. Yes, See, I didn't talk about another thing. Mm. Some of this pruning process mm. may not have anything to do with people, loved ones dying. Mm. Mm. Be the loss of a job. Mm. Loss of a relationship. And see, sometimes I, I found that sometimes when it comes to relationship, God has a huge bigger thing. Because here's the problem. There are some people that you all you place almost on a level that was close to God. Come on now. Come on. And sometimes God had to see they, they thought they left you and they thought they left you, you know, yes. they all they yes. thought they did you wrong. Yes. And they thought they did all this other stuff. But how many of you know you wouldn't appreciate the one you're with yeah. if you wouldn't have lost the one you lost? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 check this out. Some people are a part of your past because God didn't see fit for them to walk with you in your future. Yeah. And so while they were in your past, yeah. God cut them out Jesus. and you thought, yeah. Oh God, it hurt. Yeah. Oh God, it hurt. They left me lonely. Oh my God, Jesus. 
Thank took everything. I, look, took everything. Oh. Took my pride with the left too. But you know what? Oh God! Mm. <laughs> you know, the God denials are not always permanent no's. There's some people God said no to because He knew that they weren't meant to walk with you on that next level. I, I, I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. I, I, I feel like I, and, so, some, and, and, and sometimes God will leave you like this for a little while because you don't know who you need to have. That's right. Lord. Too needy to pick who you need to have. Because God knows that if you don't, because y'all way down here and God wants you to be up here. God trying to give you a crown and you messing with a clown. I gotta go a little front now. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. But listen, the pruning process of God. It hurts. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna say a lot to you. It hurts. It hurts. When God begins to cut things, when God begins to cut people out of your life, some of you, some of you lost. Some of you may have lost a job. You know why? Because your job was God. And you rather keep your little hot dog stand open and to worship God. And God says, I knew you. <laughs> and indeed, you will eventually grow from out of the pain. <laughs> from out of the pain. He says, I'm going to cause you to grow. I'm going to cause you. See, because here's the problem, and I'm almost done. The reason why he's cutting off these leaves is because they're sucking up too much of your power. <laughs> See, these, they, these don't really do a whole lot. And so as long as they're attached to you, some people are, some people are attached to you because they receive from you. And they'll never get to God because they're so busy leeching off of you. That's but the right, minute right. God begins to prune them, uh -huh. then maybe when they fall to the ground, maybe some of them are, are, are grow roots in themselves. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that happens is yeah, as long as they still stuck to you and you still stuck to them, you'll never get what you need oh. because some relationships were sent by the enemy <coughs> to keep you from becoming who you were purposed to be. Some of y'all may not like me after I say this. And so I apologize in advance, even though I'm really not sorry. <laughs> but anybody that keeps you away from God, mm -hmm. I'm, I ain't going to try to clean it up. I'm not, like, ain't no gloom around here. Anybody that tries to keep you away from God, anybody or anything that tries to separate you from God, anybody that tries to separate you from your purpose, anybody that tries to separate you from family, Maybe a Satan ambush. <laughs> and you better be careful before God cuts it and cuts you out. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I'm almost there. I ain't going to cut this thing too many more times. But he says, I am the vine. And you are the branches. Here's the problem with this whole process, because it does hurt. And see, and for the real stiff neck people, God pulls out this. Sometimes you gotta cut you real bad. I'm gonna cut you real bad, bro. But that's process. But that process. I, and I know, but, but see, you'll never become any of these things. Until you get with him. Mm -hmm. He says, I am the vine. And you are the branches. But most importantly, I want you to know. Is do you trust me? Do you trust me? I know y'all saw me up there having a nervous break. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I forgot the truth. I was scared to death. Because <clears throat> sometimes when you go through things. It can be hard to trust on. And even when you do trust, it can be hard. It, it, it can be hard. But God says, I got you. God says, I got you. Have you ever been with somebody and you broke up and then all of a sudden you saw them again and you were with the one you're with now and you and you like, praise God. God, I thank you that you didn't give me. Woo, I thank you that you didn't give me what I, what I was asking you for, God. Oh, God, I thank you. you 
Thank you, God, that you looked out for me, that you knew more of what I needed than I did. I thank you, God, you looked beyond what I wanted and gave me what I needed. That's right. Because you knew me enough to know what I wanted and what I needed. Mm -hmm. See, God can do stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got to trust him. Yes, yes he can. Lord. Amen. That was a private message. Between the anyway, um, <laughs> I'm going to pray. <clears throat> but I wanted to ask you a question. Do you trust him? Mm -hmm. I know you've been hurt. Yeah. I know there's been some areas where you've been wounded in your life. <laughs> I know you've lost some things. I had to come to a place where I had to realize I didn't lose my son. I know where he is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mr. Vaughn, you, you didn't lose your husband wherever you're at. You know where he is already. Y'all didn't lose Aunt Pearl. Y'all didn't lose Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Odell. Y'all didn't lose Uncle Nate. Y'all didn't lose Aunt Joyce. Y'all already know where they are. Amen. Because, see, our grandmother prayed a long time ago. Glory to God. She said, God, if I found favor in my sight, mm. yeah. save my baby. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Save my baby. Yes. And I have a bunch of aunts and uncles on, on different sides of the family. And then to my knowledge, every single one of them, before they died, before they went on the cross, they knew God. Glory. Glory. Every single one of them, before they left, they came into a saving knowledge of who he is. Yeah. So I didn't lose any of my aunts and uncles. I didn't lose any of them. Because I know where they are. I know where they are. You ask me why I'm take, I know where he is. And I know what he did before he died. I know where my aunt Pearl is. He ain't got to ask me. I didn't lose her. Because I know where she is. One day, I'll see her again. Amen. One day, I'll see my grandmother again. Yes. Yes. What God is saying is, God is saying, do you trust me? Mm. Do you trust me when it hurts? Mm. Do you trust me when things don't quite go your way? I know this is not quite the, the quintessential Mother's Day message, I can't but it's what the Lord showed me. But he says, do you trust me? <laughs> With the things that are going on in your life, when things happen that you don't understand, when dirt is being thrown over you, people use you, people abuse you. He said, do you trust me enough to know that I'm God and I can get you where you need to go? Yes, yes. If I told you to leave that person alone that was giving you money and, and, and trust that I would provide for you, do you trust me enough to do it? Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. <clears throat> All right. If I told you to go, would you go? Mm -hmm. If I told you to stay, would you stay? Would you trust me? If I told you to say something, would you say it? If I told you to stop talking, would you stop talking? Mm -hmm. I sense he's about to tell me to stop talking. Mm -hmm. So I want you to stand. But one of the things that God is saying is this. You trust me? Do you trust me?